data, we are very happy to share with you our experiences, our researches, and I think it would be very, very important uh, to share all together uh, our findings and to discuss about, uh, how can I say, all the issues that we have to face uh, in this very important field as the education and the data in education. I really, really appreciate your participation and the effort of my colleagues. I think it is important for Invalsi uh, to uh, share with the scientific community our activities and uh, to put at your disposal our data. I think nowadays is even more important than yesterday, let's say in this way, uh, to share the data, to use the data, or try to use the data in order to inform the policies. Uh, we are facing so many problems, the disruption of the pandemic, and sometimes a uh, not exactly uh, sensible approach uh, to the policies. And so I think the, uh, the use of the data could be very, very important uh, to help the, uh, the community in order to take informed decisions. It is not our... Uh, um, goal is not our uh, in our capacity to take the decisions because we are technicians but we have to support we have the duty to support uh, the policies with uh, the data and with the research at the same time i think uh, we have a duty call nowadays even more uh, to be a, a, um, of course uh, robust from a scientific point of view but at the same time, very practical. It means we have to take into account the impractical implication, the implementation of the policies. Uh, sometimes uh, I have discussions with uh, uh, um, the high bureaucracy in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Minister of Education or the, in the other ministries, and they say, oh, uh, uh, the research is very helpful for me. They are very, very, very detailed, very, very helpful in the no sales. What you don't have to do, but nobody gives me a suggestion what I have to do. Of course, maybe this is to, uh, to see this approach, maybe it's even a platitude, but we have to take into consideration this point of view. Uh, we, I think we should put dirty our hand here, hands, sorry, and uh, take into consideration also this dimension. And uh, I hope that in these four days, uh, we start to follow also this, uh, um, this kind of issues. Uh, um, we see, for instance, uh, after the, uh, the pandemic, uh, quite relevant or even uh, extremely relevant impacts of the uh, uh, pandemic in the uh, in the learning of our students. But uh, the situation is not that simple as expected. Uh, for instance, uh, the impact of the pandemic is maybe related with the social background of the students, or maybe not. I think it's important that the research help the, uh, the schools, the school system, in order to go more in depth. There is uh, some research that are suggesting us that maybe the social background is that important, but other researchers say no, that was not so important. Maybe more or less the impact was the same at each level of the social background. I think that the research should help the system in order to find better solution or more reasonable solution in this uh, field. And uh, another aspect, uh, and I think is another duty for us, uh, is to put uh, 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 the attention on aspects that are not in the radar of the public opinion. Uh, there are so many. Just an example, yeah, as in Balsi, we are working, I think, uh, since 2019, more or less, uh, about another new, let's say, dimension of the dropout. Uh, in, uh, in Europe, uh, the, uh, the European Union, the, the funding of the European Union is putting a lot of attention, a lot of resources 
in order to fight the, the drop out. Uh, but at the same time, from my perspective, this is a quite old-fashioned approach to the problem, of course, of course. is extremely important, I think, uh, even uh, necessary to start uh, to try at least reduce the number of students that leave the schools before the end of the schooling. But at the same time, we should take into consideration in a more proper way what the student really learn at schools, the level of skills, because we have a, a kind of a hidden dropout, we call it that in this way, a dropout that is not visible, uh, in, in that certain sense it is even more dangerous, because if we have an implicit uh, hidden dropout, we cannot hope that the public, uh, the, 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 the policies, could reach this kind of students, and we try to measure it, and the numbers, of course, are not definitive numbers because we just started to go in this direction, but the numbers for our country are quite uh, impressive, unfortunately, not in a good sense. We are speaking more or less uh, one out of ten students is leaving the, school, the high secondary school without the minimum skills required after a certain year of school. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is a, a threat for the system, not only at general level, but also at the individual level, because we are speaking about social marginality, we are speaking about uh, a lot of problems involving this, uh, this kind of students, and a general economical aspect as well. So I think data could uh, uh, help the system to go in this direction, to discover aspects that are quite <coughs> known, because everybody knows that we have a certain uh, number of students leaving the school without the uh, required skills. But our duty, really our duty, is try to measure it. One out of 10 students with a diploma in this condition, I think, is an um, issue that we cannot postpone to tomorrow in order to face it. So we are not, uh, uh, today and in the coming days, we are not speaking only about uh, research, that is, of course, the, for us, uh, is the most uh, uh, interesting part of our job, but we are maybe trying to discuss about the social value of the, uh, uh, of the research. And an institution like Invalsi, as Invalsi, has uh, as a duty, from my perspective, to take in consideration this dimension of the research. So I'm really, really thankful to you because you are helping us to use the data, we produce the data with the money of the taxpayers, so we have to give them back uh, uh, in order to use it properly. So thank you so much. I'm pretty sure that we will have uh, four very interesting days. Uh, and. Uh, Thank you to uh, uh, devote your time also to our conference, and uh, I really hope that you will enjoy uh, our sessions, our discussions, and uh, I hope that we can find at the end of this four days new research projects, new activities for our young colleagues that they working very, very hard on this field. Uh, Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Patricia Rossetti, I'm one of the uh, organizers and also the responsible of the uh, statistical service. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the seventh edition of the seminar uh, in Basi Data, Tool for Teaching and Scientific Research. And I'm glad to see you all in presence finally after after the online session of February and the mixed session of November. Uh, as you um, have seen this year, uh, the call has changed slightly. We consider contribution uh, coming not only from uh, Invalsi uh, data, but also 
coming from other sources. Uh, why? Uh, why? Uh, because of the crisis. The crisis we are facing uh, in this historical period, the pandemic, uh, and also the war, and also the energy crisis, have shown and uh, are still showing the need for everyone to commit to quickly sharing the information, as uh, uh, our president was saying before. This uh, has allowed and will allow us uh, to help stakeholders uh, to intervene in a targeted and timely manner on the problems that afflict our country. And this applies to all our countries, I think it's, it's the same. We need to get out, uh, and this is the topic of uh, this uh, of my speech, but uh, of this conference, uh, we need to get out uh, of the perspective uh, that data is closely owned by the institution that collects it, whatever institution it is. Data is a, data is a public asset, and we all have the duty to value it. If policymakers benefit from information produced by different institutions, it is our duty and responsibility to ensure that all the information told to each other. This is an example of the auxiliary data collected by Invalsi on families available uh, of PT and other digital devices um, was used by Ministry to uh, give money to the school to provide computer to the that students uh, without digital devices. So it was uh, a very, very useful information. And we gave uh, to the Ministry and, that, and I think it's our duty to do this. And also, uh, all of us, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, uh, practitioners, working in institutions and ministry, have a partial and limited uh, view of the phenomenon under investigation. And if you don't integrate data, policymakers won't have a full vision of that phenomenon on which to intervene. Privacy, this is another topic uh, very um, important. Privacy issue cannot become an excuse to prevent us from doing this. I certainly don't mean that personal and sensitive data should be made public, of course not. In here, actually, in Valsi has a policy of not publishing each school data without their permission, uh, has to avoid any prejudice against the schools themselves. In Valsi data, are so important uh, uh, to shed light on students' basic skills uh, to be pursued, but uh, this is not the only goal schools uh, um, aim to achieve. And thus, uh, it's not reasonable to judge a school on the basis of this element. It is not fair to use invalid data for ranking. But, Caution, yes, but uh, let's use our data that are available. At the same time, it uh, doesn't mean that invalid information assets can be enhanced. And uh, here I, I show you the news, um, the, uh, our new portal, uh, where we, um, we renew uh, our portal to make uh, more available data for our researchers. Um, so you, you can see we, we will uh, uh, give uh, uh, the possibility to uh, choose data, open data, public data, um, and also data coming from other sources in the same, uh, um, in the same platform. But also, uh, there will be always uh, uh, some controversies about uh, standardized tests. Last summer, I read uh, polemics regarding the comparison between invalid data and the national exam results. Um, there are people who affirm that national exam uh, at the hand of uh, the second, uh, secondary school uh, doesn't access the same elements uh, as university tests. There are instead people uh, who will ship the national exam with invalid tests. Both of them are extreme views and could be misleading, has all exceptional position. The truth is um, always in the middle. Uh, I don't believe that in multi tests don't measure what national exams do. Basic skills are certainly assessed 
during, during the national exams, but in the second case there are uh, many other items uh, on the table. But uh, anyway, both tests uh, have to speak to each other. I'll uh, show you an image in uh, that uh, is this uh, it's uh, not uh, uh, yet uh, the, 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 the topic. Here uh, we have uh, uh, the, the result of national uh, exam and uh, invalidity tests. So we need to go to the same uh, direction. But uh, controversies uh, uh, shift the focus from problems. Uh, despite all these controversies, <laughs> Um, despite all controversies on tools we use, maybe what should we be asking is, is it fair? There are so evident geographical disparities in our country. Is it fair to accept that attending a vocational institute probably means not having basic skills at the end of it, and so risking not to be an active citizen in the future? Is it fair to notice a gender gap in many situations, such as in politics, at the university, and in the world of work? Is it fair that in most cases the academic achievement depends on the class and on which school students attend? Is it fair not to take care of excellent students? Is it fair if a school system allows students attending grade 13, the end of secondary school, with the skills required at the end of grade 8, the end of low secondary school. I don't think it's fair. Here's an example uh, about the percentage of female going uh, to vote. And this is the differences uh, between male and female to, uh, going uh, to vote. And we have data to, to, to detect this. And also, we have data to uh, understand where is the problem. And uh, we have research, we can uh, uh, study the problem and find uh, the solutions, or, or try to find. How are you? Firstly, as citizens, uh, is to help and assist all students in ensuring same learning opportunities. But this is not enough. We should be sure that could exploit and take advantage of these chances, especially when difficulties emerge. We have noticed that it's easy to hide behind the channeling or behind a disadvantaged area or also behind some stereotypes. Basic skills, the access to the school and the world of work are rights and duties of all. And we do more and, <laughs> and better. The school on its own, it's not able, it's not a slogan, but uh, we have to work together to reach uh, the, our goals. Um, and the school shouldn't take charge of problems regarding all the society, uh, all the citizens. The Minister of Education and Merit is not the only responsible for context issues. It handles, of course, processes about students when they stay at the school, but it cannot step when they go at home. And, uh, and for instance, um, uh, we need to help uh, families when they are not able to face problems. Uh, we need to um, provide a, a suitable learning environment, help weak students, invest in talented learners. In conclusion, the, the, the aim of this conference uh, is that integrated data are very useful and so precious and they allow us to see all issues as a whole, to figure out um, where take action to improve each one with its competencies and responsibility. And I hope this conference now in its seventh edition could provide interesting information and uh, um, could inspire policy and action in uh, this direction. And uh, uh, usually I, I, I want to finish uh, with uh, some number of this conference because I'm very happy because the numbers are, are almost like before the pandemic. And uh, at the end, my uh, thanks uh, to all. Uh, 
this year we have three keynote speakers, so we have got four partners, and I'm very proud of this. And uh, we have 30 parallel sessions, uh, 240 participants in uh, these uh, four days, and uh, around 100 papers, and three books discussion also, and uh, 14 panel of discussion, and also a workshop. This is a very huge content. And I finish my speech to, um, with uh, my thanks. I take this opportunity to thank in advance, uh, uh, first of all, our president, Roberto Ricci, who helped uh, <laughs> growing as you, you see it now, the board of directors, the whole administration, the travel agency that this year uh, organized the event at the very last uh, minute. This is it's truly a record. The boys and the girls who will assist us uh, uh, through the event. And if you need something, uh, the staff uh, is uh, the, the ones with the blue badge. I thank all speakers and participants. And uh, a special thanks with our little girl. Uh, of a special thanks this year, even more helpful, uh, given the difficulties in the statistical areas uh, in terms of human uh, resources, is for my colleagues, the ones uh, with the red badge. You can see around uh, watching that everything is okay. They do their job with passion and uh, they are able to work even in moments of great stress uh, like this here, always with a smile. Uh, they are always uh, collaborative and proactive and uh, uh, they always face problems uh, with determination and patience. And they are also um, capable to share time for a beer or a glass of wine, also in a stress period. They already know it, but I'm glad to share uh, it again, that I feel very lucky to work with them, and I'm very proud. <laughs> Enjoy the conference. Thank you very much.